In 2012, uh, about five days before I turned 20, I dislocated my finger. And I went to look for my sister, and one of my colleagues told me, oh, she's at the shop. She wasn't. And I went up to the shop, and I would always jump over this wall. It was dark, I could still see, but if it had been daylight, I probably wouldn't have made this error, where I usually jumped at the edge of the wall, because the other side of it wasn't as steep. So I usually jumped over at the edge. I thought it was class to do. And then that particular night, I decided to jump at this end instead of this end. And because I had done it so many times before, you know, I thought uh, nothing of it. So I realized, um, so I jumped and my foot slipped on the wall and I realized it was steep. So I put my hand out as I was falling and I landed my entire weight on this finger. And the bone went through. The reason I put my hand out was to try and break my fall. If I had done this here, it wouldn't have been half as bad. Probably would have been okay. Maybe just a few cuts and bruises, but it would have been all right. So as I fell, and I smacked my entire left hand side, arm, shoulder, arm, and all, onto the ground. And then I got back up, and I just thought, that was dumb. And then I just looked at my hand, I got there to see if everything was okay. I went like, you know, and I noticed that there was a white on my finger and I realised, oh my god, that's the bone sticking out, you know, and then I just started laughing, you know, because of how stupid it was, what I just did, and I just broke my finger, and you can see, you know, when you look at these two, this finger isn't particularly in shape properly, compared to this one, maybe you won't notice it as much, so, um, I went back down to the youth centre and, uh, I went to the uh, sports hall to ask for the centre manager and uh, I had my hand behind my back uh, because I didn't want to freak anybody out because there was other um, people there and young kids and I didn't want to speak to them, it's not something that they should have to look at and then <laughs> they told me that uh, she was up in the office. I went up to the office and just uh, explained there what had happened and showed her and the centre manager <laughs> took me to the uh, Graham Hospital. And on the way out, I was laughing again. She reckons it was probably the adrenaline kicking in, but I did find it funny that, you know, how I'd broken my finger. You know, it's not something that happens every day. That's a freak accident, as some people call it. While I was sitting out you know, for the first two hours in the A&E, my finger was trying to heal up, go back into place, but it couldn't heal up properly because the bone was exposed. Now, it wasn't the full bone that came out, but it was part of it just snapped. I did try to move my fingers a tiny bit, and even though I just did that, like the amount of pain that just surged through my hand, and I'm surprised I didn't yell out a scream. I didn't. But, ow, I didn't dirty that again. The bone was sticking out, the skin was ripping out as well, it was exposed. So, um, I took photographs of it using my digital camera, and I remember going in, and they gave me. They gave me a lot of morphine. They must have thought I was in agony. I wasn't really. It was still sore, but it just wasn't. I actually wasn't in as much pain as they probably thought it was. And I was in that much morphine. And I thought that, uh, how do I describe it? I could actually taste the morphine in my mouth. I think by the third or fourth time they did it. You know, I didn't feel high or anything like that there. I didn't feel you know out of it. You know, and at one point they did actually um, uh, lie me down on the bed. You know, just so that I wouldn't get up. Uh, they kept on telling me, you know, don't get up, just lie down, sit down. Don't move, because they were afraid that I might trip or something and fall and make the injury worse. They had this, like, some kind of uh, policy in place, apparently, where um, the nurse uh, said, we have to take a swab from you, and where, where my sweat and all is. I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the nurse had this, like, stick and she said we're gonna have to swipe your groin and the centre manager went outside the curtain and then the nurse swiped it swiped me with a sample and then she went out to do what she had to do i think it was because uh, something to do with uh, i had an injury outside and i might be bringing something in or something like that i don't know and then came the part where they had to uh push the bone back inside my finger to help it heal up and re you had to realign it and the way it went was uh, the the doctor 
get, put, injected an anesthetic into my hand and it was painful, it was, but I was able to bear with it and then came the fun part where he had to push the bone back into my finger. I didn't look, I have a camera on me, I wish I had it recorded, I wish I had filmed it because I could feel the searing pain and burning, I felt like my finger was on fire, it really did and I, and I think you know, because it was pushed back in place, all the blood that was building up went all down my hand, all down it. There was a lot of blood and was sticking out. So they put it back in and they decided to keep me overnight. And I mean, normally they don't, when you break a bone, they don't, you usually end up going home <coughs> on the day or the night that it happens. But they realised that with the way that the bone came out, that there was the possibility there could be some nerve damage because I couldn't flex my fingers. Like that, I couldn't do that, and it's not because that there was damage. It's because I didn't want to aggravate it. I was not much, you know. I didn't want to make the pain worse. I didn't want, you know. And then, so they realised that uh, what they were gonna do was the next morning put me under, open up my finger, and check to see if uh, there was any nerve damage. That there was, you know, do what they have to do to fix that. There, stuff were really nice. And the next morning, there was a guy, like some kind of surgeon, I think from Belfast. And uh, he came all the way down to Craigavon to look at me, and he basically said, he basically said, if Jamie Leister can flex his fingers like this here, there's no need for an operation, you know, to look at. There's no need. So <laughs> I had like a team of, you know, there's like twenty, fifteen to twenty doctors just come into the room on the morning that I was awake. And the surgeon was standing there and they were saying, they were coming up to me and says, can you do this? Right, can you do this? And I was just going like, you know, slowly doing it, just slowly. And the reason I I was afraid to do that there, you know, but they said, push it back more, push it back more. And I was able to flex it, you know, not perfectly, it was more like that there, not perfectly, but it could. And they actually were relieved I was able to do that there. one of the doctors says, you know, if you hadn't been able to do that there, that would have been an issue. <laughs> like, we'd be, like, we would be worried. But because it was, and I left it. So they had like a bandage and all on it and stitched it up. I went home. Now, I was doing an IT course at the time, and I thought this is probably going to affect me from doing my assignments, which were all, you know, computer based. It was all, you know, going in Microsoft Word, typing up essays, and then also researching on the internet to get the information I needed. And surprisingly, that didn't happen. I was still able to type, you know, just as well as I could, you know, before it happened. And I thought, you know, it was going to be an issue, but it wasn't. Uh, it was fine. I was housebound for the next five to six days or so because they put me on medication. I'm not sure if it was painkillers or it was to kill any infection that could happen. But I couldn't leave. I wasn't allowed to leave the house, you know, until I finished the medication. And then I had to go to physiotherapy but I had to go like once every few weeks or so to see the pro- how much progress I'd made on my finger you know they wanted to see if it was healing properly if I could still use it you know as well as I used to be able to before and yeah it was all right and I'll show you this is what they made me do they said you know to do this with my finger push it in like that there and hold it like that or so for like 30 seconds then do that and then push it back in again for about about 30 seconds and keep doing that there every day to try and get it to heal properly so I can, you know, regain movement. Like, I can still use these fingers enough. They don't affect me at all. I have no issues with them. I can still feel like a click, a clicking, you know, in this here. I don't hear it, but I can feel it. But the finger is still a slightly bit stiff. It's still a bit stiff, but as you can see, like, you know, it's all right. You know, it's still, you know, there is, there is a, it is a, look, just look at that, look at that, see that, you know, <laughs> but like, I can still use them, and of course, in another 30, 40 years time, when the cold winter comes like it is now, I'll probably feel the pain in here, or so, not looking forward to that, but hopefully, as I said before, they'll have a cure for arthritis at that time, so yeah, don't do what I did, don't jump over walls and do crazy shit. I didn't jump that wall again for a long time. I have jumped it a couple of times ever since. I remember um, I accidentally pulled the dressing off one time 
the blaster just uh, I can't remember I think it just it dried up and I could see the stitches and the wee patch they put over the stitches and I was like oh no I just put it back on and then I let it sit in place again you know it just it just came off on its own but uh, I put it back on to protect the stitches so that you know they wouldn't get exposed or soaked or opened up or whatever would happen there although there was one morning I woke up in 2016 summertime I was like this here I woke up and it was like that you know, I don't know how that happened. And I had to just go like that there, you know. It got stuck in place like that there. It never happened since, but I just, I don't know what. It's just whatever way I woke up. It was like that there, on its own. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever done anything like that there, where you were carelessly jumping over something, or you did something, and it resulted in you breaking a bone, and it could have been completely avoided. But because, you know, your head was elsewhere, you weren't thinking properly, you hurt yourself. I look forward to your comments.